This is a short video to show the assembly of the feeders so it may give some answers to some questions that have been asked in various places. So here I am fitting a small photo switch and a PCB which probably should have been done in the other way. Obviously I'm not uh, holding it very comfortably because trying to get it in the camera. Small little wisp of plastic there. That plugs into the board. You may be able to hear my dogs outside going nuts. The photo switch fits in a little pocket and the gear slides onto a, a shaft sticking out so that the teeth pass through the photo switch and indicate each pitch of the feeder. So this will pick up a four millimeter pitch, but uh, it's a stepper motor driving it, so it can be positioned very accurately. Less than that, but it will correct itself every four millimeters. Here I'm hammering the part in. Um, better not to do this where I'm doing it, but I'm doing it for the camera really. Um, I could of course drill out the hole slightly just to make it an easier fit. But it needs to be tight anyway, you don't want the pin rotating, otherwise it's just going to wear itself into the plastic. And the two red gears rotate on these uh, pins. All the parts are 3D printed. Apart from obviously the PCB, the pins, um, some inserts. There's a bearing on the black gear with the teeth. I don't know whether that's really necessary, but I put it on anyway. And the stepper motor is available from Alibaba and places like that for around about $20. Probably get that cheaper if you were buying more. Already has the gear on the end of it, so that's kind of handy. And it has the cable and the plug. So it's ready to plug into the PCB there. Um, then the gears press in. A bit sticky at first to move, but uh, once you've moved it a few times, it's grand. Perfect. And here, um, the second gear goes in, and I have to loosen the screw on the back of the feeder just to move them, allow the motor to settle into the right position. It's a little bit tight there. Should move very easy with your fingers. So here I go, adjusting it. Didn't really do a practice run of this before I uh, filmed it, so uh, yeah, the order may be a little bit out. Don't know what I'm looking for here. Then I'm fitting a small blade into the top of the feeder thing. Um, I just test fit it first. It will be held in with super glue, but um, just test fit and make sure it fits before I get glue on everything. And uh, I slide a piece of tape in just to get the position. It needs to be uh, just over halfway across the component, really, the end of it. Um, the position is fairly critical. And I'm just squeezing it in with a pair of uh, long nose pliers. Now this is a blade that's bought off of Amazon. Um, and then I have to tickle it with a grinder just to change the shape of it slightly. I'll put a picture of the blade later in the video. There I am getting the super glue. And 
applying it to the back of the blade. Obviously there's a bit of risk here that you're going to stick your fingers to it so you need to be a little careful and you don't want super glue over everything. And because it's metal bonding to the plastic it takes a long time to bond which is good because it gives us a chance to uh, reposition the blade when we assemble the feeder. I did uh, have a go at printing these blades, which uh, it kind of worked, um, but I think the metal blade is better because it cannot be bent by the material passing over it, and obviously it'll last a lot longer. Now coming up I have to do a bit of buttery to this because uh, I've actually modified the 3D printing file for the cover. Um, but you'll see I'll have to cut a bit with the knife because it interferes with the gear. But in the final files that's resolved. I just didn't want to waste it. So I've skipped the part where I'm actually cutting it with a knife because that obviously won't apply in any going forward. Um, and now it's just a case of putting all the screws in. May have too many screws here, but uh, it's only the cost of a threaded insert, which isn't big. And it, it helps to hold the thing all square and everything anyway. The PCB itself has a RS-485 uh, communication kind of uh, interface um, and a small microprocessor which is, uh, I can't remember actually but I'll detail it later. It's an STM32, very small uh, chip that's around about $1.20 I believe and I don't use an external clock. I implement an EEPROM sort of thing in software um, just to store settings because you can adjust the step rate and things like that. Um, at the moment in the videos I have it moving, taking around about a second to move, um, which is fine in my case because I'm using a light placer, which is quite slow anyway. Um, and I perform the feed after I do the pick, so there's no urgency really. It can wouldn't matter if it took a few seconds because it's only a single head and it's got to go and place the part before it's likely to come back and ever need to do it again. So. This is probably boring, but I may as well just show it. So that's pretty much, it's very close to complete there. I can turn the gear with my thumb and um, I'll get a better view here. You'll see the gear if the camera focuses. So that turns the inner gear, which then turns the next one, and then underneath that, it's turning the black gear. And it's basically roughly just over one turn of the stepper motor for a four millimeter pitch. I don't actually use any components with a pitch less than four millimeters, um, but it will pitch uh, two millimeter pitch. Also, the the pickup window is big enough that you could have two components in there, and you could do um, things with open PNP, so that it'll pick twice, but from two slightly different positions. So you feed once, pick twice, kind of situation. Not sure how to do it, but uh, haven't needed to. And here I am going to check that the blade is in the right position by uh, feeding a, a reel. 
just by hand and I'll tweak the blade so I have a few more minutes until the glue's gone and set properly and uh, so I take advantage of that there is obviously a cover that covers the gears um, which I'll show in a bit I don't actually fit it because I'm still uh, tweaking the software and to get to the uh, programming port for the chip I need access to the PCB so rather than keep putting the cover on and off I'll just leave it off for now and here I am uh, checking the alignment I grab a bit of the tape and I just pull it and it's stripping and peeling the tape off to one side and then you'll see that I can feed it by yeah now there is a connector at the back of the PCB there I think you can just about see it which will accommodate two push buttons which will allow you to electrically move the uh, feeder by forward by four millimeter pitches um, and there is actually two little buttons on there but they're very small and I couldn't really find a way of sensibly putting two uh, heads on the back of the feeder so that you could press them to feed it but maybe I will I don't know yet but the connectors there in either case you can add additional buttons then this plate goes over and I'll tap the pins down the dowel pins so that they're flush with the board or with the cover and it acts to hold them straight and parallel to the holes behind a little bit cut out of the picture there but and I'm pointing at the fixing screws but unfortunately you can't see them you see them there there we go now the holes, the openings where um, you can see through, they were on a previous version of the feeder where everything was slightly narrower and I needed that clearance to allow the plugs to fit in there properly. I uh, don't need that now so I'll probably get rid of the windows, not sure. And that's kind of it really. And the next part, here is some software where I can uh, write to the serial port and read obviously. And uh, I send a load of uh, M901 commands to the, any serial number that I have and uh, I get a reply from the feeders if they're actually there. So you can see there the replies are showing for six feeders. Um, I can set an address but I just, I'm just i just using the serial number really at the moment. Um, and you can see the acceleration deceleration settings which are all adjustable with M codes. Here is the PCB and going from left to right uh, you see the two small push buttons um, either side of a connector so those buttons or an additional thing through the connector will operate the feeder forwards and backwards. Then there's um, an adjustable resistor above the capacitor, big round thing. Um, that's for adjusting the current limit on the motor. Um, the motor is actually switched off once it's done its move. Uh, this conserves power and saves the motor getting hot and affecting the plastic. Then moving further on you have the stepper driver itself. Um, above the connector for the stepper motor. Further on again. Power supplies. And then further on from that um, you have the small microprocessor, microcontroller. Followed by the RS485 chip with the connector for the photo switch and then right on the end of the board are the little pins uh, push pin things that make contact with the four tracks on the actual pick and place machine you can see here the PCB track um, there's four tracks two for power and two for the RS485 comms so it basically means that you can put a feeder anywhere you want on the rail and each one has a unique address.